It's time again to recap the latest headlines from the solar industry compiled by the American Solar Energy Society. I'm Jay Warmke with SolarPVTraining.com, and this is the news from the solar industry for the week of May 19th. Now, last week, the Biden administration announced that they're going to be expanding tariffs on a number of products that are imported from China. Now, of significance to this industry is that the 25% tariff on solar modules and solar panels uh, is actually going to double to 50% uh, over the coming years. Uh, there will also be a 50% tariff on microchips that are imported from China, and there'll be 25% tariffs on a number of products, including lithium ion batteries, battery components, uh, aluminum and steel products, as well as certain medical supplies. And there will be a 100% tariff on any electric vehicles imported to the United States from China. Now, this is significant because while, the, uh, while Tesla dominates the EV market here in the United States, this isn't the case worldwide. In fact, China dominates this marketplace with three out of the top six manufacturers being Chinese. And number one selling, BYD, actually sold about a million EVs more last year than did number two, Tesla. And while they're selling more um, EVs, they're also reducing the prices and reducing them pretty dramatically. Last month, they announced that their uh, entry-level EV, the, the Seagull, is now selling for less than $10,000. This compares with Tesla's lowest cost entry-level EV, the Model 3, which sells for a little bit more than $40,000. In addition to tariffs placed on panels from China, Tariffs will also be put on panels coming in from Malaysia, Cambodia, Thailand, and Vietnam because the Commerce Department has determined that those panels were actually Chinese panels that were just being funneled through those nations to avoid existing tariffs. Now, as a result, imports within the U.S. from those foreign four countries account for about 84% of all of the panels coming into the U.S. from overseas. China, by herself, uh, accounts for about 78% of all of the solar panels manufactured worldwide, and that dominance is growing. Exports from China increased 34% in the first half of 2023, and the U.S. is currently tied for fourth place with India in panel manufacturing, each supplying just under 2% of the world's solar modules. Now, at the same time that China's dominance in manufacturing increases, prices are declining. In 2023, the wholesale cost of a module dropped to about 15 cents per watt. Now, that's a 40% price decline since 2020, which is really only about three and a half years ago. Uh, and a panel now costs about one and a half percent of what it did back in 1990. In a sign of perhaps things to come, but certainly an indication of the terrible state of uh, energy regulation within the United States, we're starting to see zombie power plants in the news. Now, what's a zombie power plant? It's basically a coal-burning power plant that everybody wants to see dead, but actually is still being kept alive by regulators who say that closing it will impact the stability of the grid. Uh, a large part of the reason for this is because the regulatory agencies simply are not um, approving applications for new power plants fast enough. One example of this zombie power plant situation is Brandon Shores Power Plant that's located near Baltimore, Maryland. Environmentalists want this plant closed. Local residents want it closed. The EPA wants it closed. Even the owner of the power plant, Talon Energy, wants to close it because it costs too much to operate. And in 2023, they told PJM, which is the regulatory body that oversees the electrical grid, in the region that really spans all the way from New York City to uh, Chicago. Uh, they told them they wanted to close it, but PGM say, said no, uh, that closing the power plant would cause unacceptable risks to grid reliability. So Talon actually uh, declared bankruptcy, and PJM is now charging ratepayers uh, to pay Talon to keep this 40-year-old power plant operating. And in surely what must be unrelated news, PJM also announced there's a 40% increase in the backlog of interconnection 
connection applications or permissions to attach new power plants, primarily wind and solar, uh, with an average wait time of five years before PGM uh, gives permission to proceed with the project. And the U.S. has officially surpassed the five millionth solar installation in this nation, coming just eight years after they surpassed one million. Uh, over half of all of the solar currently installed has been installed since 2020. Today, about 7% of all homes have solar modules on them. And CEA, the Solar Energy Industries Association, is projecting that within six years, that's going to more than double to where 15% of all U.S. homes have solar installed. Now, well, residential solar only accounts for about 25% of all of the generating capacity from solar uh, nationwide because commercial systems and utility scale systems are much larger for each system. But residential accounts for about 97% of all of the systems when in actual number. And that is the news from the solar industry for this week. We'll see you next week.